This is the, uh, seems like the long awaited part two of the ASUS troubleshooting video. First thing I will note that I think a few people had questions on, there's not a specific pin it down particular thing that I did or was looking for to actually quote unquote fix the router. So those of questions like that, it wasn't my intention going into the video. It was just general troubleshooting and trying to figure out what may be causing the issue. And at the end of the video, kind of going like, hey, these are the things that I tried as far as the hardware was concerned. So I'll spend a few minutes going over maybe a little bit more in detail and more specifically what I discovered in what I had done in the first part of that video, because this is my main router. This thing has been pretty, pretty much rock solid since I made those modifications. So the first thing that I looked at in troubleshooting was the power supply. You know, the, the easiest thing you can do is just to look at your power supply, if it's been hidden away in a, in a cabinet or something for, for many months or whatever, and see if there's any visual distortion on it. Like, is it, is there anything that looks like it's, out, like it's not maintaining its shape? If it is, then I would immediately replace it because it, it's a sign of, immediate sign of thermal stress. Seems very obvious, like a kind of duh sort of thing, but I mean, things hidden away, you don't look at them, if you're having issues with the router not functioning properly and you're power cycling it or it's just turning itself off, it may not be the router, it may actually be the power supply. If you have a thermal imaging camera, super cool. If you have an infrared thermometer, still very cool. Even like a voltmeter that has like a, temp a temperature probe that you can stick on here, maybe with some black electrical tape or something like that and just let it sit. And then just check to make sure that it's not exceeding about 50 degrees Celsius. If you're above 50 degrees Celsius, there might be something to consider with the power supply. The next thing was the voltage on the power supply. So I was just checking to make sure that when plugging into the wall, that I was getting the rated voltage. So you can look at it and you'll usually find it on the side of the unit. This says output 19 volts at 1.58 amps. So I was getting about 19.2 volts open circuit. And then when I turned the unit on and it was loaded, uh, I think it dropped by about 0.1 volts. So about 19.1 something volts. And so that indicated the power supply wasn't experiencing any voltage to collapse and then cause either a low voltage situation inside of the unit or possible resets, shutdowns, etc. The next thing I looked at was just taking everything apart. I had noticed that on the back side of the board, there was a lot of residual flux left over. That concerned me because flux can be corrosive and there was actually a little bit of corrosion that was, that was noticed on the, on the board. As best I possibly could, I went and cleaned it all off with 91% isopropyl alcohol and the Q-tips that you saw in the video. And so that's the next thing I would look for is just anything on the board physically that visually looks like it's not clean. So clean that all off. I do think cleaning the flux off actually helped because it was in areas where the antennas were soldered through hole, it's high frequency. How much it helped, I do not know. And that's, you know, it may be 0.1%, it might be 100%, but it was something that was suspicious and is not something that is indicative of a board that's in good shape. And so that's why I did what I did. The third, thing was the heat sink. And that I think of all the things that I was talking about in the video, that was the probably the, the biggest thing was getting heat off of this device. It has holes around it, like it has holes on the sides here, it has holes on the, on, the, on the bottom. There was a lot of heat coming off of this particular model. I don't know about the other ones, but this one seems to draw about 11 to 12 watts. When it's busy, when it's not busy, it kind of drops down to like a nine, nine to 10 watts. When I looked at that and I looked at the heat sink and the thermal pads, that suggested to me that you know, there was a potentially heat issue. Modifications that I made to the heat sink that, or not the heat sink, but the way the heat sink was coupled to those EMI shields, I think did improve the heat spreading and heat transfer away from critical components. I am going to plug this thing in and we're gonna go through the steps to rescue this thing. I gotta move cables all over the place. So what it'll do is uh, go through the, re the restore mode, the recovery mode, finish that, show how to recover the configuration file in a secure way, which Asus doesn't seem to really show you that. And I think it's kind of a security issue if you're not doing it in the way that I'm going to show. So here we are, the router's back up and it is not connected to anything. If you can get your router back up again and it's not connected to anything, 
the first thing I would do is go and download your configuration. You don't have to, but it, it does help to kind of speed up provisioning of the router once you get everything restored. You go down to your administration here, go to restore, save, upload setting tab, and then save setting. Do not click on the, this checkbox, otherwise it won't work. And then you'll see it download a uh, setting file. There it goes. Boom. We're gonna start following the ASUS firmware restoration uh, procedure. Now I've checked, this is the most current version of the ASUS restore firmware restoration utility that there is. And it is uh, from 2017 and they have not updated it in quite some time. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but the instructions in here are, the tutorial that is, is not particularly clear. And you'll see why in a moment. So first thing we're gonna do is reset the router. So I'm gonna come over here and press down the reset button, hold it for 10 seconds until the light starts blinking. And then I'll release it and we'll put it back down. There it goes, it's resetting. So what this first reset does is it puts it back into its default factory mode. The second thing we are going to do is put it into recovery mode, which is subtly but importantly different. And if you read the instructions, it does tell you how to do that. So there we are, we are rebooted. And we can verify that by looking at our what access points we have available. See, I have quite a few access points around me. Um, and this is actually an area of, the, of my place where it's quite insulated from the outside world. Uh, okay, so there's the ASUS 5G unencrypted. This is an older router, so it just goes to, hey, come and join my open network. Not great. And so what we wanna do now is put it in rescue mode. So we power off the router and press and hold the reset button. And they have a picture here that has nothing to do with the reset button, but that's great. So we'll press and hold the reset button like this. So we're holding that down. Then power the router on and then release the reset button when you see the LED flashing, the power LED flashing slowly. And I'll verify it looking at, or me looking at it first, and then I will have it. There we go, it's flashing slowly. Ooh, that reset button didn't quite pop out. So there it is in slow blink mode. So now it's waiting, everything is, it's now booted into its recovery mode. There, it's just waiting for firmware, basically. It has very low level stuff ready. And I'm going to plug in the ethernet cable into any one of the four LAN ports, plug it into my adapter, and plug that into the computer. That's so we're gonna go into settings, system preferences, into network. There's my LAN. Yeah, and you can see that it is already, I'll just uncheck the box. There is the manually configured IP address, at 168 192.168.1.12, subnet mask, the router, and then the DNS server, which I have set to 1.1.1.1. So we're all set here. And so we should be able to go to the next step and start router restoration. So we're gonna go here. I have previously downloaded the most current version of the firmware, which I'll go to this tab and show that for the RT, N66U, this is the current version of the firmware which I downloaded a few days ago. We're going here, we're gonna choose that firmware. There it is sitting in firmware release and download. I'm now going to upload it and it should start counting up. There it goes.
Okay, so if you reach this point, you're at a critical moment. Don't do anything that the firmware restoration utility tells you to do. Do nothing. Let the router just sit here. This little message pops up saying, successfully recover the system, please reboot the router. If you, first of all, what is even rebooting the router? Because you can't, there's no GUI to go to yet. You, you can't get to it because you don't have the router's IP address. You're just doing ad hoc networking right now. It's not gonna let you get to that web page. Power cycling in ASUS vernacular, pushing the power button is powering it on and off as they've said in previous steps. So if you power it off and power it back on again, all you're gonna find is this light will slowly start blinking again because the unit just dutifully goes off and then comes back up again in its recovery mode. And it'll keep doing this over and over and over again. We're gonna, you can okay this, just let it go away. This will just go back to what it was doing and just let the router sit, go have a snack, go take a walk, go do something. And I'll let the camera keep running I'm going to go take a break. So there we are. It's back. It's back up. Showing the 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz radios are up. And let's go to our wireless settings here. And here we have the ASUS 5G and ASUS. Now, if you have a newer router that when it first powers on, it actually provides these access points as WPA2 encrypted networks. They just give you the key in the box and you can skip this step. But if you're still rocking the RTN66U or similar routers that when they first turn on, they actually are the provisioned with open networks, then I recommend you, fo you, you follow these steps to better secure your router as you upload the configuration file. Here's what we're gonna do, it's pretty simple. So it's join, join the network, open, and I'm gonna go and connect to it. And we can see that it's going and wanted to go through its special setup, awesome. We're gonna skip all that. We should only recommend you set the wireless security settings first. Well. Actually, they don't even give you a choice. They make you do that. So here's what you want to do for a temporary moment. The, the important thing is that right now, you can see up here, this is not a secure connection. Also, between the computer and the router, it's open. There's no WPA or WPA2 encryption. So whatever password I type in here to change this to is transmitted in the clear to the router. And then the router restarts all of those services and then presents a network that is encrypted. So kind of mm, a little janky. But honestly, the workaround with a low attack surface is make this something not super secure and you're on it for only a few minutes only to restore your configuration file. And that way you're set. The other option you can do is just shut off the Wi-Fi, don't connect to the Wi-Fi and do everything through the Ethernet cable, that's another option. We're just gonna make this test to test and apply. It's gonna make it for both networks. It's gonna go ahead and configure, there, it's telling what it's doing, complete. So now we're set and it's not gonna connect or I think it's gonna connect and say, hey, this is previously connected in another way. It's probably not gonna connect it. So let's turn Wi-Fi off. Turn it back on. 5G, oh, it was open before and now it's not. Yes, that's correct. So join it and then it should ask for, it may actually have that same, cause it's the same janky password I created before. Yep, it, it does, it remembered that, so that's fine. So you have to type in that password, but um, it already knows it because I have done this before, this whole thing. So we're gonna go back. It wants you to change the router login password now that you've made the, uh, the Wi-Fi secure, which is nice. And then I'm just gonna make this honestly the same as my, can't even type it. Test, test, doesn't matter. Now you know my password to my router. It doesn't matter because it's gonna change. You're immediately gonna go change it. So you'll see it'll make you log in now. So now we are logged in 
to the router. What I want to do next is a one client connected. That's me on this computer. And I'm going over to administration. I'm going to go to restore safe upload setting. We're going to go to not, yeah, not factory default. I'm going to go to restore setting upload and then go and find that CFG file that you previously saved. If you don't have a CFG file, it's fine. If the, if the router was really acting wonky and, and you weren't able to download it or access it, that's totally fine. You just go back and set everything back up again, but this helps you skip those steps. So we'll go ahead and hit choose. It's gonna go and upload those settings and it takes about 60 seconds. So we will wait. All right, it completed. It's gonna, I think, reboot. Let's see how the lights flash on it. Okay, so it's gonna be restarting here, I think. And then I'll have to go find my new network. There it is. So it knows these networks because there's this is what it was previously connected to. So we're gonna go over to five gigahertz Metal Gear, Metal Gear EXT. It'll connect. Yeah, first thing I will need to do is actually no longer use, I use the 10.0.1.subnet. subnet and it will retain your previous password. It has, it has the payout password in that configuration file. So you'll use the password you previously used to log into your router. Maybe reset the password. I'm just gonna make it the same as my, what my password was. Previously, we just put the username and password, I think, back in there. Now they make you change it or reconfirm it, I think, something like that. Okay, here we are. Now we're back to exactly where we were when we first started this video which is great because it, it shows that we wiped, we reset the router, we put it into recovery mode, we downloaded, independently downloaded that current version of the firmware, uploaded it using the ASUS restoration utility, got the router back into its normal operating mode, secured the router temporarily, either by using ethernet or Wi-Fi with a temporary WPA2 passphrase for the network, logged into that, uploaded the configuration file, and then brought it back to basically it being fully operational. All I gotta do is walk it back over to the other side of my house, plug it back into everything, and it's ready to go. I really hope that helps. Yeah, hit me up with any comments, like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.